Chapter 9 Am I not an apostle? After Paul finishes teaching the Corinthians about eating meat that has been sacrificed to idols, he begins a lecture on his apostleship. There is almost no debate today as to whether Paul was an apostle or not. He was pretty clear on the subject as was God when he called him on the Damascus Road. The only question we still have to settle today with some is that after 2,000 years just what kind of apostle was he? He was not an apostle to the 12 tribes of Israel because there were only 12 of them and they are all named in the scriptures with Matthias being the 12th. If you don't believe Matthias is the 12th apostle, then cut the last half of Acts chapter 1 out of the scriptures and any other portion you choose not to believe. No writer of any scripture ever said Matthias was not one of the twelve. In fact, all eleven of the apostles agreed that Matthias was the replacement for Judas. Did Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, say the eleven made a mistake and then write a retraction for their hasty decision? No, nothing is mentioned by Luke who was the apostle Paul's traveling companion for a good while. Acts 1 verse 26 And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Acts 2 verse 14 But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Paul had to defend his apostleship often as he does in this chapter, but he never claims to be one of the twelve apostles to the twelve tribes of Israel because they all met a particular requirement that Paul could never meet. They were all to have followed Christ since the baptism of John and they had to have seen the risen Christ. Paul eventually did see the risen Christ, but he never followed Christ during his earthly ministry which was a requirement that Christ alone put upon the office of an apostle to the nation of Israel. No one today has seen the risen Christ and they have definitely not followed Christ during his earthly ministry. Matthew 19 verse 28 And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Those who have followed Christ in his earthly ministry as apostles will in the kingdom, the regeneration, sit on twelve thrones judging the literal twelve tribes of Israel. Matthias was one of only two people there that day when the eleven chose Judas' replacement which met the Christ's requirements. Also, Paul never saw Christ during the 40 days after he was resurrected as Acts 1 verses 21 to 22 required. Acts 1 verses 21 to 22 Wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Peter didn't just make up those requirements as some suggest. He and the other apostles had just spent 40 days with Christ learning about things pertaining unto the kingdom, not the church. Acts 1 verses 3 to 5 To whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. They acted in a timely fashion to the Lord's command and critics have been wrongly blaming him and them for two millenniums. Paul is a unique apostle as he says so himself. He alone is the apostle of the Gentiles. No one else can claim such a thing. No one. He makes this clear that it is his office that is unique. He is the apostle for the body of Christ today. It is through his writings that the body of Christ gets its doctrine. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 1 Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? Am I not an apostle? I sent one. Paul is an apostle. 
Acts 13 verses 1 to 4, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas, and Simeon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Menin, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So, they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Am I not free, free from the bondage of Pharisaical Judaism? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? One of the requirements to be an apostle, a sent one, was that you had to have seen Jesus Christ and be sent by him. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 8 And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Are not ye my work in the Lord? Paul started the church in Corinth on his second missionary journey. Acts 18 verse 1 After these things Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 2 If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. The seal of mine apostleship are ye. A seal was something recognized by its owner and all who may see it as being a legitimate form of identification. The Corinthians were identified with Paul because unlike Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, and Athens where he only spent a very short time at, usually three or four weeks, Paul spent 18 months establishing this church. The very same people that Paul had led to the Lord now had divisive groups in their midst that would cut his mission support and he had the right and the authority by God to call them out for it and to also lay the biblical defense for his position. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 3 to 5 Mine answer to them that do examine me is this, Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and Cephas? Mine answer to them that do examine me, Paul's apostleship was called into question by at least one faction in the church in Corinth, most likely those that followed Cephas, Simon Peter. Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, since they all needed support to conduct the mission God had given them to reach the lost sheep of the house of Israel, then Paul and his companions had authority to do the same. Matthew 10 verse 17 And Cephas, Simon Peter Paul uses these well-known facts to plead his case that they as well should be supported by the churches which they themselves have started, by the freewill offerings of the church. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 6 to 7 Or I only and Barnabas, have not we power to forbear working? Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard, and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth the flock, and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Or I only and Barnabas, have not we power to forbear working? Barnabas and Paul had the power given to them by God to forbear working at the church's expense. Acts 13 verses 1 to 3 the answers to the three rhetorical questions in verse 7 are all the same. No one does those things and expects nothing in return. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 8 to 9 say I these things as a man? Or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Deuteronomy 25 verse 4 Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. Seth not the law the same also, the law of Moses. Paul here goes to the law of Moses to make his appeal to the church in Corinth, which if you remember had its start in a synagogue and was made up of many Jews, especially in its early days. It was not because they were still under the law that Paul went to Moses' words, but because there are principles found therein that transcend any dispensation. The principle that if an ox was working for you to give you physical bounty you were not to deny him the physical needs, he had to produce them for you. The same principles applied to Paul and Barnabas being taken care of by those that they were laboring or had labored for. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 10 Or saith he it altogether for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. 
2 Timothy 2 verse 6 The husbandman that labyrinth must be first partaker of the fruits. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 11 to 12 If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, Paul had the right to be a partaker of the Corinthians' carnal things, material or financial, because he had ministered unto them spiritual things. Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things. Paul said he didn't exercise his right to receive support from the Corinthian church so that no one would say that Paul was in it for the money. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 13 to 14 Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. They which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Paul again uses an Old Testament example under the law to show a principle that carries over during the dispensation of grace. Even so hath the Lord ordained that those who minister today under grace and preach the gospel should live, be supported, of the gospel, not by the tithe but by the free will offerings of the church's members. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 15 But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me, for it were better for me to die, than that any man should make my glorying void. Make my glorying void. Paul would allow no man to say he was in it for the money. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 16 to 17 For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. God called Paul not to follow the twelve apostles in their message, but to be the apostle of the Gentiles. If I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. Paul never said no, he just said, what wilt thou have me to do? Acts 9 verse 6 And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. If against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, Paul didn't volunteer to be the apostle of the Gentiles, he was drafted. He was given the revelation of the mystery concerning the dispensation of the grace of God. Romans 11 verse 13 For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 10 For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 18 What is my reward then? Verily that, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. 
I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. Paul wanted people to hear the gospel clearly and not be focused on his abilities or shortcomings. That I abuse not my power in the gospel, we that preach the gospel are to preach it so that the heathen will have no excuse to point fingers at us as charlatans, but as sincere ministers of the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 19 to 20 For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, Paul went to the Jewish synagogues and risked his life to win his kinsmen to Christ. To them that are under the law, as under the law, Paul would live like a Pharisee to reach his fellow Pharisees. Jews under the law. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 21 to them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. Them that are without law, as without law, Paul went to the lost Gentiles in faraway lands, and he reached them in the way that Gentiles could relate to. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 22 to 23 to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak, what liberties I may have in Christ, I surrender when I am trying to win a person to Christ who thinks it is a sin. We may have to shave our heads to reach a tribe with the gospel, while in another part of the world we may have to grow a beard. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 26 Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run, that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. This is speaking things being done in moderation. A perfect balance. An incorruptible, an incorruptible crown. An eternal reward that fideth not away. 2 Timothy 4 verse 8 Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27 But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I keep under my body, not giving in to fleshly desires, and letting Christ live through us through the Spirit. I myself should be a castaway. Paul is saying that he is not able to be used by God to win the race if he does not take off the weights he is carrying. What good is? A father to his daughter if he is stranded on an island, a castaway. We become castaways when we consume ourselves in worldly things that keep us from the spiritual things that we should be doing. Chapter 10 And Samples for Our Admonition Remember that chapter 10 is a continuation of the thoughts in chapter 9 concerning our attitude for service. Paul now takes his mostly Hebrew audience back to the stories of their ancestors to remind them of their successes and failures. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 1 to 2 Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. I would not that ye should be ignorant, Paul was reminding the Corinthian Jews that their forefathers were all there with Moses, Joshua, and Caleb in the church in the wilderness, Acts 7 verse 38, and had a good start. All our fathers were under the cloud. Paul is speaking here specifically about his and others' Jewish heritage to educate all the believers in the church in Corinth, both Jew and Gentile. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 2 Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Paul is pointing out that they, their Jewish fathers, all had the same experience, and that they all had a good start when they began following Moses, but they sinned in spite of their good beginnings. Baptized unto Moses, this meant that they identified with Moses. They followed him because he was God's messenger. 
this was a dry baptism where none of God's people got wet, just as enemies who all drown in the sea. Exodus 14 colon 16 22. Both Romans 6 verses 2 to 5 and 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 are also both dry baptisms, no water at all, only the Spirit. Romans 6 verses 2 to 5 God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 3 to 4 And did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. The same spiritual meat, the manna in the wilderness, Exodus 16 verse 5. The same spiritual drink, the water from a rock, Exodus 17 verse 6. That spiritual rock, that rock was Christ. Deuteronomy 32 verse 4 and 15. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 5 to 6. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. They were overthrown in the wilderness, because of their unbelief in God's promises, and their desire for things they had back in Egypt as slaves, they didn't want to enter the promised land, so God let them die in the wilderness. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 7 Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Exodus 32 verse 6 And they rose up early on the morrow, and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. While they all experienced the same miracles together, they did not all respond the same way. Many of them, not all, ended up displeasing God by their actions and were destroyed for it. Paul serves as a pattern for who believe today in the body of Christ, not just in salvation by grace through faith, but in service. The Corinthians were lusting, satisfying their flesh like before they were saved, just like Israel lusting after the food they once had as slaves. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 8 Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. In one day three and twenty thousand, in Numbers 25 colon 9 it says that twenty four thousand died. That is because one thousand more died in the days following the plague. It is not a contradiction. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 9 Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Numbers 21 colon 6 And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 10 Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Numbers 14 27-28 How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11 Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. All these things happened unto them for ensamples, the them here is Israel. They are written for our admonition, the our here is the church, which is Christ's body, made up of Jews and Gentiles. We should study the Old Testament scriptures for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come, the word world sometimes means the same thing as the word ages, but only when the context allows it. 2 Peter 2 verse 6 And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. The same world earth is still here, but those on it in that previous age all perished. Another example, 
It's the end of the world as we know it, meaning things are different now than in a past age. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 Wherefore let him that think he standeth take heed lest he fall. Standeth, someone who thinks he cannot be tempted. Proverbs 16 verse 18 Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 13 to 14 There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. As is common to man, our temptations are the same ones all of mankind have had to face. A way to escape, Ephesians 4 verses 21 to 27 If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Flee from idolatry, do not hang around idolatry, but flee from it like Joseph did from Potiphar's wife, or you will be caught up in it. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 15 I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. Paul had previously asked them if there was not a wise man among them. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 5 I speak to your shame. Is it so, that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. A wise man is someone who understands the scriptures rightly divided. The Communion 1 Corinthians 10 verse 16 The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? The cup of blessing which we bless, when Christ was with his disciples in the upper room, he took the cup with the wine, non-fermented, and blessed it. Matthew 26 verse 27 the communion of the blood of Christ. We are recipients of the shed blood of Christ when we place our faith in Christ's finished work on our behalf. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 17 For we being many are one bread, and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. The bread which we break, the bread which they break goes along with the cup which they bless. It is broken to symbolize Christ's body being broken for us. The communion of the body of Christ, if we, the church, or his body, then we are the bread which was broken. We have communion together over the bread remembering what he did in his physical body for us, the spiritual body of Christ. John 19 verse 36 quotes Psalm 34 verse 20 and it refers to his flesh, not his bones. John 19 verse 36 For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. Psalm 34 verse 20 He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 18 Behold Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? Israel after the flesh, Jews who are circumcised. Romans 4 verses 1 and 2 and 12 The priests in Israel did eat from the sacrifices brought to them by the children of Israel. Exodus 29 verses 32 to 33. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 19 to 21. What say I then? That the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to God, and I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord, and the cup of devils, ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table, and of the table of devils. I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils, by knowingly partaking of meat sacrificed to devils they would be fellowshipping with devils. Paul gives the Corinthian believers advice concerning this issue in the next verses. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 22 to 26 Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, 
but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. Exodus 9 verse 29 And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease, neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. Psalm 24 colon 1 A Psalm of David The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. In the shambles, the markets. Can I eat that meat today? Sure, I am physically able, and God will not strike me dead for it, but it would not be expedient to eat it around those who may become weak because of the liberality I have. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 27 to 28 If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that shoot it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, Exodus 9 verse 29 and Psalm 24 verse 1. Asking no questions, they could eat it if they didn't ask if it was offered to an idol. They were not to eat it if it was made known to them that it was sacrificed to an idol to be a witness. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 29 to 31 Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other, for why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat, or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. That which I give thanks, all food is to be received and consumed with, prayer, thanksgiving by a believer. We are to ask God to bless the food He has given us, because it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. 1 Timothy 4 verses 3-5 to Forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 32 to 33 Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles. There were two classifications of lost people before the middle wall of partition came down between them, Jews, and Gentiles. Ephesians 2 verse 14 For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Nor to the church of God, this is a reference to the body of Christ. It is a reference specifically to the church of God in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2 The saved person was in a class all to himself. That they may be saved, Paul is instructing them to look for ways to help someone see Christ in them. We are not to hinder people from knowing Christ by our deeds. Chapter 11 Following Paul 1 Corinthians 11 verses 1 to 2 Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances, as I delivered them to you. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. How did Paul follow Christ? Christ was Paul's spiritual authority over him. Paul did not follow Christ as the twelve followed him according to the prophecy program, he followed Christ according to the mystery program which was revealed unto him. Paul preached Jesus Christ according to the mystery. Romans 16 verse 25 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Now I praise you, brethren, see verses 11 and 17 of the same chapter where Paul says that he praises them not for how they were partaking of the Lord's Supper. Remember me in all things, this simply means that we are to remember what he said, or what he did in similar circumstances, and we in the body of Christ are to do likewise. Paul is our pattern today. 
1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all longsuffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. There are at least two ordinances that the Corinthians were to keep according to Paul, because he used the plural form of the word, not the singular. He also said to keep them as he delivered them unto them, which meant they had been previously kept another way by others, the kingdom saints. Paul immediately begins to talk about head coverings and the length of hair on both men and women, not baptism here, so let's stay in context. Baptism is not even hinted at here. What ordinances did Paul give to churches early on that are identified in the book of Acts as ordinances? There were four of them. Acts 15 and 16, which occurs just before Paul goes to Corinth. Acts 18 verse 1. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. The head of every man is Christ, this not speaking of his physical head, but the spiritual authority over him. The head of the woman is the man, Ephesians 5 verse 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. The head of Christ is God, John 8 verse 29, And he that sent me is with me, the Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 4 Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, this first part of verse 4 is speaking of a man's literal head. Dishonoreth his head, this last part of verse 4 is speaking about man's spiritual authority over him, which is Christ. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 5, But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. A woman's head, spiritual authority over her, is the man, this means man she is married to. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 6, For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Why do the Jews today pray with their heads covered? Tradition. That doesn't make it right to deliberately disobey God's word. When we as men pray with our heads covered today, we dishonor our head which is Christ. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 7 to 10 For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Power on her head, this is in reference to her hair as a covering. Because of the angels, there are no female angels, and they serve as helpers when people pray. An angel needed to be able to identify who was a male and who was a female to properly help them. For a woman to pray uncovered means that she does not want to be under the covering of her husband and the angels were not able to help her as they could if she were submissive to her head. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 11 to 12 Nevertheless neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man, in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. The woman is of the man, every woman is from Adam, man. Even so is the man also by the woman, every man is born of a woman, but each one is from God and each one needs the other. No man or woman is an island. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 13 to 16 Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that, if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Is it comely that a woman to pray unto God uncovered, is it proper? 
a woman's hair is given to her for a covering for her prayer unto God. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 17 Now in this that I declare unto you I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. Now in this that I declare unto you I praise you not. This is in sharp contrast to verse 2 above where Paul praised the Corinthian church for remembering him in all things and for keeping the ordinances as he delivered them unto them. That ye come together not for the better, but for the worse, it would have been better for them not to have had the Lord's Supper in the manner they were. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 18 to 19 For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. I hear that there be divisions among you, factions, cliques, people followers, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas. I partly believe it. These were not just personalities that people were dividing themselves from others over. There were doctrinal differences amongst them in the church in Corinth. There must be also heresies among you. The word heresies here is related to the doctrines that were divided people in this church around personalities. That they which are approved among you may be made manifest, those approved of God to be teachers in Corinth. If some claimed they were of Cephas, Peter, then they would be pledging allegiance to Jerusalem and Israel's kingdom program given to the twelve apostles, they would have been in opposition to Paul and the mysteries revealed unto him by the risen Christ. Paul dealt with the personality issue earlier in this book, and now he would deal with some of the doctrinal issues that would naturally follow by choosing either to follow Paul or to follow Peter's teaching, because they were different. Neither Peter nor Paul's teaching were heresies in their day, but to teach some of Peter's teachings today in the dispensation of grace would be heresy for today. The Lord's Supper 1 Corinthians 11 verse 20 When ye come together therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. When ye come together therefore into one place, in the church, not a building, but in an assembly together. This is not to eat the Lord's Supper. What they were doing was not a good depiction of what the Lord's Supper was. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 21 to 22 For in eating every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Every one taketh before other his own supper. When the Corinthians were meeting claiming to observe the Lord's Supper, they were not commemorating it at all. They were corrupting it with their leaven, their sinful and heretical behavior. The pastor of that church had let things slip to the point of heresies getting in unchallenged that were leavening the whole lump, so to speak. Because Christ was in the upper room observing the Passover meal with his disciples when he instituted the Lord's Supper, many have confused them and they have blended the two together. They are not the same thing. However, many have the Lord's Supper on the state every year because it is the anniversary of it, which is also why some churches only do the Lord's Supper once a year. Neither Christ nor Paul commanded us to observe it only once a year. Is a church sinning because it only observes it once a year or because it observes it every week? No, our only requirement was that as often as we do it, we do shew forth the Lord's death until he returns. The problem with some of the Corinthians was that it was not a memorial meal reminding them of Christ's death anymore but had become a time of feasting and even drunkenness instead of a solemn occasion for reflection. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 23 to 24 For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, Paul now refers back to verse 2 of this chapter when he said to keep the ordinances as he delivered them unto them when he reminds them that he received them from the Lord. The bread Christ tells us here represents his physical body, not the spiritual body, which is the church. The church was not broken for him. His body was broken for the church. 
It is a miracle that through all the beating that Christ took on that day that not a bone of him was broken. When Christ had the first Lord's Supper, he did not break bread like you and I in the Western world think of breaking a wafer. He did not have a wafer, but a piece of unleavened bread that would be torn and passed around. Each of the disciples would tear off a piece of bread and would pass it on to the next person. Christ ends the breaking and eating of the bread with the statement that we are to do this in remembrance of him. It should never be just a quiet ritual with no explanation of why we observe it today. It should always be used to instruct the lost that Christ died for them and to remind the saint of how he has benefited from that terrible yet wonderful event which happened 2000 years ago. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 25 to 26 After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. The statement about the cup of Christ being the New Testament in his blood is not shocking to us as it was to those who heard him say it. When Jesus spoke, he often said things that his disciples did not comprehend at the time he said it. To say that that cup was the New Testament in his blood had to bring each of his Jewish listeners on that day back to the comments made by Moses as he gave them the first covenant and sprinkled blood on them. Did Jesus think he was greater than Moses? Yes, he did, and yes, he was. Here Paul tells us that however often we have the Lord's Supper, we are to observe it in remembrance of him until he returns. There will be people observing the Lord's Supper during the tribulation period, but it will no longer be necessary during the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 27 to 29 Wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily, the question is who is worthy to eat the bread and to drink the cup? Believers have been made worthy by the blood Christ shed for them. A believer has been forgiven of his guilt while a non-believer remains guilty. People should always be warned of the qualification of faith before they are offered the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper. The individual has the responsibility to examine themselves to see if they should partake of the Lord's Supper. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, a lost person does not discern the significance of the Lord's body because they do not have spiritual discernment. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 30 to 32 For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, because people did not examine themselves, and they partook of the Lord's Supper unworthily, they became weak and sick, and many slept, died. Is this still happening today? Are church members dying because they are taking the Lord's Supper unworthily? No, but it was definitely happening while the body of Christ was in its infancy stages, but when the church became mature and put away childish things, the miraculous sign gifts this form of chastening was no longer used. No more Jewish signs were necessary for the maturing church with the completed word of God. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 33 to 34 Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Paul was not finished with the Corinthian church, but God was finished with this epistle for the body of Christ. Paul could have continued on but was led of the Lord to stop writing here. He was moved to write, and he was moved to stop. That is how the Holy Spirit worked with the writers of the Old Testament as well as the New, New Wine versus Wine. The term New Wine is mentioned in the Bible in 22 times in 18 verses. It is mentioned at the first as a part of an offering commanded by God. 
Proverbs 3 verse 10 So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. You press grapes and grape juice burst out, which the Bible calls new wine. Isaiah 65 verse 8 Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servants. Sakes, that I may not destroy them all. Grape juice is described as the blood of the grape. Deuteronomy 32 verse 14 Butter of kine, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats, with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Chapter 12 Spiritual Gifts 1 Corinthians 12 verses 1 to 2 Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Spiritual Gifts While the church at Corinth had a very Jewish beginning in Acts chapter 18 in the synagogue, and eventually in the house that connected to the synagogue, the church had now become predominantly Gentile, and Paul here seeks to educate them about spiritual gifts. Just as they were once led by men to follow the spirits that were behind the dumb idols of Corinth because of their ignorance of the truth, they could now be led astray by abusing the gifts that the Holy Spirit had given unto the churches. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3 Wherefore I give you to understand, that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Spirit of God that administers or dispenses spiritual gifts as he sees fit in the body of Christ today, and if someone had claimed to be endowed with a spiritual gift there was a way that they could be tried to see if it was true. If a person speaking of Jesus Christ claimed that he was accursed, then that was another spirit impersonating the Holy Spirit of God, and it was not to be believed. Today, the title of Lord means very little as compared to when Israel was back under the law. To say that Jesus is Lord meant he was God in the flesh. Devil spirits did not want to admit this. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 4 to 5 Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, God the Holy Spirit is the same Spirit in verse 4. Not everyone in the Corinthian church had the same gifts. Individuals has been equipped with different spiritual gifts for the purpose of profiting the body of Christ. There are diversities of administrations, but the same Lord, God the Son is referred to here as the same Lord in verse 5. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God, God the Father is referred to here as the same God in verse 6. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 7 to 11 But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. The manifestation of the Spirit, in early acts the Holy Spirit would manifest himself in believers through a variety of spiritual gifts necessary for these churches in their infancy. This continued until the word of God, that which is perfect is come, was completed at the end of the book of Acts. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 to 8 To one is given by the Spirit, all of these gifts were not all given to all believers in Corinth. They were divided up individually. Notice the words to one and to another are both singular. Each meant that only one person in that body had that gift, not all in that body. These sign gifts were given at the onset of a new message of grace to validate the message and its messenger as coming from God. Israel required a sign, and after Israel received their initial signs from God then God would gradually begin to take the signs away as the nation matured and were able to walk by faith and not by sight, seeing miracles. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22 
Moses was indeed God's spokesman to Israel, but the signs he was given began to diminish and by the time Joshua was the leader of Israel, the miraculous signs were no longer necessary and they began to be taken away by God. When Israel became mature, God took away the childish signs needed by a nation in its infancy. God had also given to the new church miraculous sign gifts during its infancy until that which was perfect was come. Spiritual Gifts The Word of Wisdom The Holy Spirit would impart godly wisdom to an individual on a subject related to the body of Christ that was not written about yet in the scriptures. The Word of Knowledge Some received a word of knowledge from the Spirit. To another faith the supernatural gift of faith believing that God was going to do something to encourage others who were doubting. To another the gifts of healing, Paul was able to heal many right up until he arrived in Rome. Acts 28 verses 1 to 8. Paul would later have to leave Trophimus sick in Miletum, and he could not help Epaphroditus who was nigh unto death after this time because the sign gifts had vanished at that time. To another the working of miracles, the supernatural ability to raise people from the dead. To another prophecy, the supernatural gift of a message from God. To another the discerning of spirits, the supernatural ability to discern if a prophecy was from God or if it was a seducing spirit with a doctrine of devils. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. To another divers kinds of tongues, this was a language. To another the interpretation of tongues, one would be able to interpret the language being spoken. It would always be used in conjunction with the gift of tongues. Each of these gifts was given out in the past as the Holy Spirit willed. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12 For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So also is Christ. He is one with the Father and the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. There is no water in this verse. Notice that we are baptized into one body by the one Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one doing the baptizing, and He is not using any water anywhere here. We were placed into the body of Christ the moment we trusted the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1-4. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 14-17 For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? The church is not one person, neither can a member of the body divorce themselves from their responsibility to the body because the body is all the members working together. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 18 to 20 But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. God is the one that gifted these members to fulfill a specific function in the body, the local church. Today we still have many members in each local church, we just do not have the sign gifts in operation to help us today because we have the perfect word of God to do that. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 21 to 26 And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it.
Our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness, pleasant to look at, attractive. God is the mortar, temper, that holds the body together, and it is his responsibility to ensure that no one part of the body has the preeminence over another. It is when the individual exalts himself or another over others that God has to humble them to restore unity in the body. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 27 to 28 Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly, teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular, the church is the body of Christ. He is our head, we are his body. Ephesians 5 verse 23 and Colossians 1 verses 18 to 24. God allowed miraculous gifts and offices that helped as the word of God was being completed and they served to verify the message as being from God and the messenger as being God's servant. First apostles, Paul, Barnabas, and Silas. Acts 14 verses 1 to 4. Secondarily prophets, these offices are listed in the order of their importance in the infancy of the body of Christ. The first two offices ceased after the signs ceased in Acts 28. Thirdly teachers, those who teach what they have been taught from Paul's teachings given to him for us from the risen Christ by revelation. A pastor and bishop is the primary teacher in the church, the body of Christ, today. After that miracles, notice where the miracles placed on the list. Fourth, behind three offices that communicated the word of God to people. Helps, those who assist the leaders. Governments, they help the steer the church in the correct direction. They are ministers to come alongside the bishops and pastors. Both titles bishop and pastor are used interchangeably as the name for the same office. Ephesians 4 verse 11, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. 1 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 2, This is a true saying, If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, Titus 1 verse 7 for a bishop must be blameless, as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Diversity of tongues, notice where tongues are mentioned, last, and there are different tongues. Why? Different languages. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 29 to 31 are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet shew I unto you a more excellent way. Paul asks seven rhetorical questions to the Corinthians and us. The answer to each is no. So why do some even today claim to have all of these gifts? They are lying and people are not calling them out on it. <laughs>